the legendary, lovely Marlena. This was Noel Coward's way of introducing his longtime friend to an adoring and star-studded audience at London's Café de Paris one night in June 1954, as one of the greatest icons of 20th century cinema forged a whole new career as a cabaret singer. Marlene Dietrich was born in Berlin in 1901 to a well-to-do mother and a police lieutenant father who died when she was just six. Married in 1924 to the benign Rudy Seiber, her career exploded in 1929 when she appeared as Lola Lola in The Blue Angel, directed by the great cinematic stylist Joseph von Sternberg. The film was a smash hit and Marlena's hit song, Falling in Love Again, became her signature tune. Dietrich and von Sternberg then made a string of gloriously camp and divinely decadent Hollywood films together. They weren't always successful at the time, but the reputations of films like Morocco, The Scarlet Empress and Shanghai Express are unassailable today. But by the late 30s, with her popularity on the wane, she showed her particular talent for survival by taking second billing in, of all things, a comedy western, Destry Rides Again. As showgirl Frenchie, the quintessential tart with a heart, she was a marvel, and her chemistry with co-star Jimmy Stewart palpable. Her ability to laugh at herself and her image gave her career a major boost. That level of adulation only soared when war broke out, and Dietrich spoke against Hitler and anti-Semitism, taking out American citizenship in 1939, and becoming one of Hollywood's most visible and tireless campaigners when it came to doing her bit for the war effort. She was one of the first stars to sell war bonds, and her performances for the Allied troops quickly became the stuff of legend. In 1945, a Life magazine photograph of her being lifted up to kiss a homecoming soldier leaning through a porthole was reprinted around the world. Throughout her life and career, Marlena was always extremely image conscious. So, despite a string of lovers including von Sternberg, John Gabin, Edith Piaf, Yul Brynner, Mercedes da Costa, John Gilbert, and Eric Maria Remarque, she remained married to Rudolf Seiber right up until his death from cancer in 1976. When her only child, Maria Riva, gave birth to her first son in 1948, Marlena willingly posed for pictures as the world's most glamorous grandmother. Her film career after World War II rarely achieved its earlier heights, with a few notable exceptions, in particular, A Foreign Affair and Witness for the Prosecution, Orson Welles' superb 1958 drama, A Touch of Evil, which many considered the finest performance of her career, and Stanley Kramer's star-studded Judgment at Nuremberg in 1961. She was to make just one more film appearance, little more than a cameo in the cultish Just a Gigolo in 1979. Marlena spent the last decade or so of her life a physical recluse, holed up and bedridden in her Parisian apartment. But far from being shut off from the world, she filled her days with letter writing and telephone calls, running up monthly phone bills of 3,000 US dollars. She kept in touch with world leaders like Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev, and remained, in her daughter's words, a law unto herself. Dietrich died on the 6th of May, 1992. But she remains a Hollywood icon. Perhaps that's because her appeal was always exotic, wavering enticingly between goddess and slave. Two images in Morocco encapsulate her perfectly for all time. First, there's the sultry singer dressed in tuxedo and top hat, tossing a rose to legionnaire Gary Cooper before kissing a female audience member on the lips. Then there is the devoted camp follower, shedding her shoes as she heads out into the desert to follow her man at the end of the film. The legendary, lovely Marlena indeed.